same way that you feel. God does not want you feeling guilty anymore because you do not join your friends every Sunday morning at 3rd and Main Street at that building. And, and, and those people are angry with you, they stop speaking to you, they're looking cockeyed at you, uh, they think you've lost your salvation. But ladies and gentlemen, stop feeling guilty because you don't go to that building on a regular basis. God wants you to come into his presence. If, if you have to worship the Lord at home until you get uh, uh, to the place where God wants you to be, uh, do it. God wants you to separate yourself so that you can draw nigh unto him. Ladies and gentlemen, why go to church every Sunday for 40 years and not know God? If it means separating yourself from them for a season, drawing nigh unto God, if it means worshiping at the worship where I am church until God says, okay, now you've grown, now I want you to go to First Baptist or I want you to go and meet Pastor so-and-so, or I want you to fellowship here. Then, ladies and gentlemen, you have been prepared, you have been groomed, and you can go there feeling free. And Pastor Carter is not going to feel bad because you don't come on the worship where I am church anymore because I know I have done my job. I have stood in the gap. This ministry has stood in the gap to help you to grow, to be where God wants you to be. So we don't want you feeling under condemnation. Praise God. We welcome you. Hallelujah to the worship where I am church. And we thank God. We bless God today. We're going to look at um, uh, lesson number three, part number uh, three, the third lesson, but it's part number four of the How Can I Get Closer to God series. We're going to close this series out today, part four of the How Can I um, get closer to God series and actually this is the third step in what Habakkuk did as he teaches us how to draw nigh unto God so uh, greet your neighbor greet your family say hello give somebody a big hug and let's get ready for prayer and then we have the word and then after the word we open up uh, the uh, phones for chat and with you on it a little bit. Father, Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. We give thanks to you for this new day. We praise you. We praise you for the worship where I am, church. We thank you, Lord, for planting this ministry. We thank you, Lord God, because we know that we know that most Americans, most people in other nations do not attend regular church services. So we thank you for this ministry and ministries that you've raised up where people can come online and can shut out the world and can open their hearts to the Holy Spirit. Now, Lord, we want you to touch each one wherever they are. You said in your word where the Spirit of God is. There is liberty. Lord, we want you to deliver people from the condemnation of, of, of the negative feelings they have when they don't attend regular worship services. Deliver them from the spirit of condemnation. Lord, you said you have not given us a spirit of condemnation. Oh, Father, we ask that you bless this service, anoint your word, and set people free today. And we thank you, Lord God. We bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. We greet our people and other nations all over the world who are uh, watching this program via video. And we thank God for those who are online with us live. I love you all. I thank God for you. You're a blessing to my heart. It is so good to know that God has a purpose and a plan for this ministry. And God has a plan for you. So we ask that you open your Bible or download Download Habakkuk chapter two, and we're gonna look. We're gonna look at verses one through three. That's Habakkuk, or Habakkuk, or Habuka, or Habaka. It's Habakkuk chapter two, verses one to three. Habakkuk had one of those funny names, like 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 uh, Shania or Shanene. Uh, uh, Habakkuk. They had funny names back then too. But see, Habakkuk's name has a purpose. Habakkuk is one who uh, 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 trusted in the Lord. Uh, he embraced God. He embraced God. And so he was called Habakkuk. 
Okay, so let's look at chapter 2, verses 1 to 3. We're going to spend a few minutes with Habakkuk as we put together this final step in how Habakkuk sought the Lord. And this series, as you go back and review the tapes, you might want to go to www.backtobasicsministry.wordpress.com and see and see uh, how you can get this this tape and the whole series. I'm going to bring that up on the screen that you can go to www.backtobasicsministry.wordpress.com and you can review the whole series. They're archived on, on that website. I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say to me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tablets that he may run that readeth it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. That's from the King James Version. The, the New American Standard updated version it says, I will stand on my guard post. I will set myself on the rampart, and I will watch to see what he will speak to me and how I am to reply to him when I am reproved. Then the Lord answered me and said, Record the vision and inscribe it upon tablets that the one who reads it may run. For the vision is yet for the appointed time. He says, it will happen. It will occur. It will take place. He said, wait for it. Wait for it. The vision is yet for an appointed time. Wait for it. It will not, it will not tarry, though it may, may fail. It will not fail, though it may tarry. It won't fail. It might delay, but wait for it. And God promised that the vision will not delay. Ladies and gentlemen, what do we mean by vision? Vision is a word from the Lord. You need a vision for your life. I need a vision for my life. If you're married, you need a vision for your marriage. What's well, a vision? Does it mean I got to see things? No, it doesn't mean you see things. It means you hear from God's voice. You hear from God yourself what God wants for you. God wants to speak to you directly. He wants to give you a vision. He wants to give you a plan for your life. The reason why a lot of people have dropped out of the church, ladies and gentlemen, because they can't hear from God. They can hear the choir. They can see the preachers performing. They can see the ushers dancing. They can see the praise team going through their gyrations. They can see this. They can experience this. But people are hurting for the voice of God. And I know somebody uh, uh, can say amen on that. They need to hear from God. You see, this we're living in such an evil world. A lot of people, there are people who, who are suicidal. There are people on board listening today who have had thoughts of suicide. No, no, don't kill yourself. The best is yet to come. Come, Well, Pastor Card, you don't know what I'm going through. Oh, but I know what you can go through. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Ladies and gentlemen, here's a word from God. You want a vision? Here is a vision. Here is a vision. I am the Lord that healeth thee. Exodus 15, 26. That means if you're going through sickness and you're, you're tired of suffering, through pain, Exodus 15, 26b says, I am the Lord that healeth thee. In other words, God promises, ladies and gentlemen, he will heal you. It is up to you to wait on him for that promise. And don't let anything rob you of that vision. A vision is a word from God. You can get a word from God, a logos. The written word, the written word of God. For example, when I'm reading Psalm 23, uh, the Logos, the Logos is the written word of God, L-O-G-O-S. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. That's Logos. It is written. And the word says, 
The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want for anything. And that's a promise from God. You can take that, ladies and gentlemen, all the rest of your life. You can live off that word all the rest of your life, ladies and gentlemen, because God's word doesn't not change. He will not change. But then, but then if, if you're going through something and you and you're at a place in your life, you're tired of just sitting up in church. You're tired. You're tired of hearing uh, 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 people talk politics in the pulpit. You're tired of the manipulation. You want to hear from God for yourself. Then it's time for you to 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 tune into the uh, worship where I am church because we promote seeking God. We promote you to seek God. We encourage you to seek God for yourself. We do not want to manipulate or control you. We want you to be free to seek God for yourself, for your family, for your loved ones. And so that's where uh, when you're seeking God for a word, you're looking for a rhema word. Logos is the written word. Everything from Genesis to Revelation is called logos. It's the word of God. You can trust it. You can live on it. Jesus said in Matthew 4, 4, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Every word is written. It's written. And then God will give you a spoken word a rhema word for your circumstances. You're going through your husband's acting crazy. He's coming home smelling like some old cheap perfume. Uh, you suspect he's been hanging out with some hole, and 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 and, and you and 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 you want to know what to do. Uh, you've got a pan of hot grits boiling on the stove, and you're ready to baptize him in hot grits and gravy. No, no, no. Al contraire. Don't do that. You go to God. And, and, and even though it's hurting, your, your heart's broken, and you're in pain, you cry out unto the Lord, what shall I do? And ladies and gentlemen, God will give you a spoken word, a rhema word. In other words, he will speak directly to you about your situation. And I guarantee you, he will not have you baptize your husband in grits and gravy. God will take good care of him. God will deliver you. He will give you the word for that situation. Ladies and gentlemen, in every situation, you can seek God for his word. But they don't teach this. Linda Barr says no rolling pin, no baseball bat, no Glock, no AK-47. No, no. For the weapons of our warfare, ladies and gentlemen, or, or, and no poison either. No poison. Don't be poisoning. Uh, don't be poisoning his tea and coffee. Uh, no. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God. You seek God for his word. You draw nigh unto the Lord, and God will bless you. I guarantee you, he will bless you. He will bless your marriage. He will bless your family, bless your job, bless your children. He will bless your community. He will bless this nation, and he will bless your nation. But you've got to trust in him. Amen. Because a lot of stuff you're getting from uh, uh, so-called Christians ain't real. Amen. A lot of this advice and counsel is not real. God wants you to have some godly counselors, people who know the Lord, who trust the Lord, who trust in the inerrancy of Scripture and will minister to you uh, in spirit and in truth. Amen. So you can't believe every spirit out there. And so God may call you away and have you attend the worship where I am, church. God uh, um, may have you go to go to www.backtobasicsministry.wordpress.com and review these messages because they will bless you. All of this is introduction into what Habakkuk says. Here's his situation. Habakkuk is living in Israel, and Israel is going down the tube. Israel is quickly going south, going down the drain. Israel is quickly being flushed down the toilet, ladies and gentlemen. God got to a point with Israel that he said, that's it. That's it. I will no longer contend with you. I will no longer strive with you. I've sent my prophets. I've sent my word. You killed my prophets. You've turned your backs on me. You've turned my temple, my place of worship, into a a, a, a a free market, a flea market. You have turned it into a a a a a, a restaurant. 
you, you, you have big feasts there, you drink your wine, you smoke your reefer, and you, 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 you have sex uh, in the rooms in my house, and, and that's it, God said. Ladies and gentlemen, God got to a place with Israel where he said, that's it, no more. I will not have mercy on you. And like he raised up the prophet Hosea, and one of Hosea's children was named No Mercy. In other words, God said, I'll have no more mercy on you. And ladies and gentlemen, you don't want God to do that in America. You don't want God to do that in France. You don't want God to do that in Canada. You don't want to do that on your street or in your community or in your church. If God says that's it, ladies and gentlemen, you can be going to church for 40 years. And if God says that's it, that's it. And so you have the response. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm rolling this over to you in the name of Jesus. It is your responsibility to find out why God planted you on planet Earth. It is not a preacher's responsibility to tell you what your purpose is. It is not your mama's responsibility or your daddy's responsibility or your wife's responsibility or your husband's responsibility or your boyfriend or your girlfriend, ladies and gentlemen, you have the responsibility to find out what God, what, why God placed you on earth. And if you're not seeking the Lord and you turn this off, and I know some of you uh, have a tent, you, you will turn this off. You don't want to hear it, but I speak it in the name of Jesus. If you don't take the time to find out why God, why God put you on this earth, you are pitiful. You are pathetic. You are uh, uh, doing yourself a uh, great dishonor. You are dishonoring God. You're dishonoring your wife. Husband, if you do not seek God for your marriage and you just let things, let the chips fall where they may, you are a poor punk of a, of a husband. Lay, wife, if you don't seek God for your marriage and find out what is your purpose in this marriage, then you are a poor wife. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, Hosea got to the place where he said, God, I've heard the prophets. You have given me prophecy. You have spoken your word. Now, Lord, you said that you're going to punish this nation. Lord, what's going to happen to this nation? Habakkuk said he did not just say let the chips fall where they may. He did not say Donald Trump is president now. Let the chips fall where they may. And a lot of people have taken that attitude. Hey, Trump's in. Whatever goes, whatever goes down. You know, I'm down with it. You know, let it go down. No, ladies and gentlemen, you have a responsibility to seek God for this nation, for your family, for your church, for your community. You have responsibility to seek God for yourself. You have responsibility to go to God and say, God, I'm 50 years old. I still don't know what you want me to do in this life then you've got to seek God. And, 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 and a lot of times you can't get it sitting up in First Baptist because you're concerned about seeking God and they're talking about raising money for Men's Day. They want you to get on the mail course and, and, and go door to door, or stand on the corner with a cup and beg traffickers for money for the church while you're concerned about your soul. You're concerned about healing. You're concerned about de being delivered from cancer. You're concerned about your children. You're concerned about the welfare of your family. You're concerned about a job. You're concerned about so many other things. So you need to learn how to do what Habakkuk did. And so in this series that we've been teaching in the last several weeks, we looked at two things that Habakkuk did. And we're going to give you the third today. It's going to be short and sweet. Then we're going to put some icing on this cake. Amen. And we're going to praise the Lord. The first thing Habakkuk did was say, he said, and it was a positional thing. It was, he had to make up in his spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, when you want to change in your life, you've got to make up in your heart, in your spirit. This is what I'm going to do. And nothing, nobody, not even your wife, not even your children, not even your job, not even the president of the United States, not even the attorney general can change your mind. When you make up your mind, I'm going to seek God about this matter. I'm going to get in God's face. I'm going to humble myself. I'm going to stay there and I'm not going to move until God speaks to me. Ladies and gentlemen, when you reach that place, you will get results. 
you will get results. They don't teach this in the church, ladies and gentlemen. They don't. Some don't even have prayer in the church. They have an altar call. Then somebody says some generic prayer while you're standing at the altar dying of cancer or, or your marriage is going down the drain or you've lost your job, your your house is being uh, uh, repoed and your, your car is being repoed and they're having an altar call and somebody's talking about uh, something that has nothing to do with anybody's healing. So ladies and gentlemen, we want to teach you how to seek God for yourself, how to draw closer to the Lord for yourself. And the first thing Habakkuk did was he said, I'm going to stand upon my guard post and I'm going to station myself at the rampart. In other words, he made a quality spiritual decision and, and he had to do physically what he said he would do spiritually. That, that change must take place in your heart, ladies and gentlemen. If you want to change in your life, it must take place in your heart, not your mind. Because your mind can deceive you. Your heart can deceive you. But when you put it in your heart, and, and by heart we mean in your spirit, when you make up your mind, I'm going to stop smoking reefer. If it kills me, I'm going to stop snorting cocaine. If it kills me, I'm going to stop having sex with my neighbor's wife. I'm going to stop committing adultery. I'm going to stop fornicating. I'm going to stop playing the lottery. I'm going to stop going to the casino. Even if I lose all my friends, if I lose my family. Ladies and gentlemen, when you make that kind of declaration, then the next step is go to God. Go to God. You set up a situation where you go to God and you meet God on a regular basis and don't and don't take a counterfeit. Don't fall for a counterfeit because when you make up your mind, there are going to be counterfeit voices. Satan's going to try to disguise himself as God, but you've got to make up your mind. I'm going to seek God on this matter. I'm going to get an answer and I'm not going to turn God loose until he answers me. You've got to be like Jacob, ladies and gentlemen, at the river Jabbok, where he wrestled all night long with God. And God said, morning's coming, the daylight's coming, man. You better turn me loose. You know no man can see my face and live. Jacob said, I will not turn you loose. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the kind of relationship we need to have with God. This is the way we ought to go to church on Sunday. I'm not coming back from church the same way I left. I'm not going to church and, and, and come back uh, still smoking dope. I'm not going to go to church and come back still a liar. I'm not going to go to church and come back still a deceiver. I'm not going to go to church and come back still a hoe. I'm not going to go to church and come back still a hoe monger. I'm going to change. Um, and see, when you seek God, amen, and you go to church seeking that, everybody's not going to accept you because they're not on your page. That is why you've got to learn how to seek God for yourself. That is why the Worship Where I Am Church exists, amen, that you can find your place. And when you find that place, ladies and gentlemen, you go there. They may criticize you for not showing up. Uh, at your usher's post, they may criticize you because you're not there to sing a song. You're not there to put your money in a basket. But you go to that place where you have determined, I am going to meet God, and you stay there. If you've got to go back again next week, if you've got to go back the following week, go to that place and stay there, ladies and gentlemen. And you wrestle with God like Jacob wrestled with God. And, and Jacob said, no, I will not turn you loose. And, and when God realized how serious Jacob was, Jacob, who had been a liar, a deceiver, a no good cutthroat of a man, God said, I'm, I'm going to bless you. What's your name? And he said, my name is Jacob. And God said, your, your name is no longer Jacob. Your name is Israel. I'm going to name a whole race of people after you. Because you wrestled with me and you have prevailed. Ladies and gentlemen, you can wrestle with God and prevail. 
God made you to wrestle with him and prevail. God made you, the Bible says in Psalm 139, 14, I am fearfully and wonderfully made that I might praise him. If your life is at a place now where you're not praising, praising God, you don't have any joy. You don't understand this whole joy thing. You don't understand what we talk about when we talk about the Holy Ghost, the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You owe it to yourself. To stop being a lazy, laid-back Christian, so-called Christian, and you need to press yourself into the presence of God. Because what if we're right about the baptism of the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues? What if we're right when we say you can lay hands on the sick and they recover? What if we're right when we say you can lay hands on your wife and she can get healed? But if you're lazy and no count and you believe what they're teaching the First Baptist and, and, and you don't want to break out of that mode, you don't want to try anything, you don't want to launch out into the deep, then you're going to stay pitiful and pathetic for the rest of your life. Ladies and gentlemen, why not be all that God made you to be? Why not be different? Dare to be different. Don't be a crowd pleaser. Don't be a people pleaser. Seek the Lord with all your heart. And when Habakkuk made up his mind, I'm going to seek the Lord. God said he's going to destroy my nation but I'm going to ask him what's going to happen to the people. And I'm going to go in God's face. I'm going to stay there. And I'm not going to move, he said. I am not going to move until he answers me. So the first thing he says, we see it in Habakkuk 2, uh, verse 1. I will stand on my guard post. I'm going to stand on my guard post like a military man. I'm going to stand. I ain't going to lay down. I ain't going to sit down. I'm going to stand like I'm on guard duty because I'm looking for the Lord. I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. I'm looking, I'm, I'm going to set myself on the rampart. I'm going to get me a high place on my guard post where I can look all over the perimeter, look all over to the horizon. And I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking, and my spiritual antenna are up and my heart is open to the Lord. I'm going to shut down my cell phone. I'm going to turn off the TV. I'm going to turn off the, I ain't going to the movies. I ain't going to the bar. I ain't smoking anything. I ain't touching anything. I'm going to wait on the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, when you make up your mind that that's what you're going to do, God is waiting for you. The Bible says, for the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth, seeking to prove himself strong on behalf of them whose hearts are perfect toward him. God's waiting on you. He's waiting on you, man. He is waiting on you. God's waiting on you to make up your mind to seek him. And God says, seek me and you shall find me. You shall find me when you seek me with all your heart. The second thing we did uh, uh, that Habakkuk did after he set himself on his guard post, stood on the guard post and set himself uh, to see God, to find God, to seek God. And, and the second thing he did was he decided, I will watch to see. Now, he's already watching, but he said, I'm going to watch to see what he's going to say to me. I'm going to watch. He's going to do a double watch. I'm going to watch with my eyes, but I'm also going to watch with spiritual eyes. I'm going to see what he will say to me. I'm going to search for God. I'm coming into his presence in the name of Jesus. I'm going to watch to see what he will speak to me. In other words, Habakkuk teaches us, ladies and gentlemen, that when you seek God this way, you're going to watch to see what he will speak to you. God has to speak to you. Ladies and gentlemen, come on, get this. Get this. Get this. Receive it. I'm going to watch to see, or I'm going to wait to see what he will say to me. And how I will respond when he reproves me. In other words, Habakkuk knew God's coming. He's going to speak to me. And he might reprove me. He might rebuke me. He might tell me where it's at. But I'm going to watch to see what he's going to say to me. Ladies and gentlemen, most people in the church do not get to this place in God. That is why less than 20% of Americans do not attend church. They don't find any meaning in it. Ladies and gentlemen, 
you don't find you will not find meaning in the church if you wait for Sunday. You've got to find meaning at home on Monday, in the midnight hour, on your job, in your car, in your marriage, in your family. You've got to find meaning. You've got to know why God planted you where he planted you. And in order for you to understand, you've got to have a relationship with God. You may say, well, Pastor Carter, I'm saved. Yes, you can be saved. But you can be saved and not have a relationship with God. In other words, God has accepted you in the beloved because you have confessed Jesus as Lord. But it's up to you now that Jesus is Lord to learn about this Jesus. Learn why he died on the cross for you. Learn about the fellowship he wants. God's greatest desire, ladies and gentlemen, is to fellowship with you, to talk with you to commune with you, to walk with you in the cool of the morning or in the cool of the evening like he did with Adam and Eve before they fell. God's greatest desire, ladies and gentlemen, is to find somebody who will fellowship with him, commune with him, talk to him, listen to him, seek his face, obey him. And that's got why God placed you on this planet. Not to be a CEO. Not to be a professor, not to have 18 degrees, not to have a whole lot of money, not to work three or four jobs, but to commune with him. And sometimes you've got to tell your wife, um, for this whole week I'm seeking God. So please honor that. Or wife may have to tell husband, this week I'm seeking God. Please honor that. Or the children, dad, I'm seeking God this week. Will you honor that? And, 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 and in other words, you pray for them and let them seek God the way they know how. So we see, uh, number one, Habakkuk said, I will stand at my guard post. I will station myself at the rampart. And then number two, I'm going to watch to see what he will say to me. Because I've come for God to speak to me. Ladies and gentlemen, so many people go to church. But they do not go expecting God to say anything to them personally. And ladies and gentlemen, if you're depending on a preacher to give you what thus saith the Lord, a lot of us will be messed up because many preachers, ladies and gentlemen, listen, listen to me. I'm a preacher. I know many preachers do not seek God for what you need. You say, well, I ask him to pray for me. Yeah. And he said, God bless John Jones. And that's what his, that was his prayer for you. Ladies and gentlemen, you need to seek God for yourself. Don't trust someone else to do for you what you can do for yourself. Please receive this. And then the third thing that Habakkuk did, and we're going to make it, I said uh, we're going to make it brief. You know, when I say that, hey, hey, it's usually not brief. But the third thing and the last thing in just a few minutes we have remaining, the third thing Habakkuk did, he said he wrote the vision. He wrote the vision. He wrote the word that God spoke to him. Now, when you set your heart, when you get in a place where you're going to hear from God. It may be a prayer room, a prayer closet, sitting out in your car, going to a room in your house, finding a quiet place. Or for me, when I walk the mountain trail uh, most mornings, I'm going to a certain place where when I sit on that bench in that, in that place, God speaks to me when I quiet myself down. I hear his voice. And... And lately I've put in my jacket, I put a notepad and a pen because I want to write down what he says to me. Ladies and gentlemen, when you position yourself, first of all, position your heart, your spirit. Make up your mind in your heart, I am going to seek God. And then you position yourself where you can hear God, where you can study the scripture, where you can praise him and worship him. And then Quiet yourself down to hear from him. Then the third thing is, when he speaks to you, write the vision. Ladies and gentlemen, the second and third steps of this process of quieting yourself down and giving God a chance to speak, and the third step, writing the vision, most people miss it. 
But now that you've heard it on Back to Basics Ministries through the Bible in one year, I'm sorry, you hear that also on Wednesday on Through the Bible in One Year, but in the Worship Where I Am Church, now you can start writing down, keep a ledger, keep a notebook, date it. Like today, I wrote in my notebook what God said to me. Early this morning, I wrote in my notebook, and then you revisit your notebook. You write the vision. Keep it before you. Let it be a point of contact. Let the word of God, the rhema word that he gives you, that you write down. Let it be a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path. And ladies and gentlemen, as you learn how to journal and how to write down what God speaks to you, before long, you're learning how to hear his voice. You're writing down what he gives you. You're writing the vision. And then you're seeing these things come to pass. God is not a man that he should lie. He's got a process. He's got principles. He's got a way to do things. And he's looking. He's looking today for somebody to apply these steps as you seek God. Well, that ends our series on the four-part series on how to get closer to God. In part one, we gave you an overview. We looked at Habakkuk and his situation and his circumstances. Part two, we looked at step number one, that I will stand on my guard post and sit myself at the ramparts and, and wait to hear from God. Part uh, uh, Lesson number three and part two of this step-by-step uh, -step procedure is I'm going to uh, watch to see what he will say to me because I know he's going to speak to me. He's got to speak to me because I've approached him the right way. I've come in the name of Jesus. He must speak to me, and I'm going to wait. And when he speaks, step number three, I'm going to write the vision. Write the vision. Late, husband and wife, write the vision for your marriage. Young lady, you're not married yet? Write the vision God gives you about what your husband ought to be. Write it. Print it out. Put it on your mirror. Look at it every day. This is the man I'm going to marry. Look at his qualifications. Write the vision, ladies and gentlemen. Write the vision. Uh, couple, you're, go, you're about to have a baby. Seek God for that child's life. Write the vision. Write the things that God gives you. Amen. You've got an issue with uh, 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 sin in your life. You've got an issue uh, with uh, needing healing. You seek God and write the vision and watch to see what he would do because he will hasten his word to perform it. Well, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. I praise God. I thank God for, for Habakkuk. By the way, God told Habakkuk what he would do with Israel. Yes, Israel went into captivity, and God promised to save a remnant. And even though, even though Habakkuk knew that they had to see some hard times, Habakkuk knew that God would not destroy the whole nation, that he would rebuild the nation, that he would send the Messiah, and that he would uh, redeem Israel. And so Habakkuk says in chapter 3, verse 2, O oh Lord, I have heard thy speech. And was afraid. O oh Lord, revive thy work in the midst of the years. In the midst of the years, make known. In wrath, remember mercy. Habakkuk pleaded with God, revive your work. Revive Israel. Revive me. I'm your workmanship. Revive me. Revive me. And in your wrath, remember to have mercy on me. Praise God. And God will. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Pastor Leroy Carter. I love you. I pray to God to bless you wherever you are, that these messages are a blessing to you. You hold fast. You be strong in the Lord. Don't you give up and don't you quit. Seek the Lord for yourself. And I guarantee you, he will show up with an answer and he will bless you. We praise God. Father, we thank you in Jesus' mighty name. We bless you and honor you. In Jesus' name, bless your people, God. We love you. You are mighty. There is none other like you. Bless everyone on this call. Help them to apply the principles of this word. And we thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Well, if I can help you in any way, give me a call, 404-205-1101, or email me, LeroyCarter69 at yahoo.com, or hit me up on the website, 
www.backtobasicsministry.wordpress.com. And I will be sure to respond to you to be a blessing to you in the mighty name of Jesus.